After months of attempts by the Biden administration to bolster the U.S. baby formula supply, grocery stores and pharmacies are still struggling to keep shelves stocked. In Michigan, production at the Abbott plant, which supplies about one-fifth of the country's formula, has shut down twice since the start of 2020, 2022. Uh, it closed for the first time in February after the discovery of a harmful bacteria. The plant reopened for a second time earlier this month after severe thunderstorms and flooding. So we're going to bring in Dr. Susanna Hills. She's a pediatric airway surgeon and assistant professor of ENT at Columbia University Medical Center. Thanks for joining us because, as Vlad and I were saying, we haven't talked about this. But I knew that the problem was probably still there because I had heard about this second closure just as the plant was sort of getting up and running again. So give us a lay of the land. What is the situation at the hospital? What is the situation for parents outside of the hospital trying to get their hands on formula? Yeah. Well, earlier this month, um, as much as a third of formula products were not in stock and shelves in the store. So it's been a really difficult problem for parents trying to find formula in stores. The hospital's doing much better. Um, we've been able to hook patients up with suppliers, with the manufacturers, and they're directly sending formula to infants, especially those who need specialty formulas from the ICU um, or from our newborn unit. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of pathways in place in the hospital to get infants special formulas that they need so they're not stuck. But out of the hospital, especially my patients who need special formulas that aren't readily available are really struggling. Families who use WIC uh, to get their formula are really struggling mm -hmm. too because um, they have a lot of trouble getting uh, formula online, which is a resource a lot of families are using, and WIC does not um, fund uh, online purchase of formula. So it's really difficult. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, I guess people were going to ask, why does it take so long to get these shelves fully stocked again? I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, this could be the completely wrong analogy, but when I think about like what this country was able to accomplish, for example, during World War II, we mobilized and we started building planes and tanks and everything we needed to win the war mm -hmm. effort. Everybody got behind it. and. It just happened, and it feels like here, what, how many months has it been? And we're still talking about, and it all hinges on this one lab. Aren't there others that make baby formula? Can't we get it from our partners in Europe? I, I just struggle to understand what's, what's taking yeah. so long. I mean, it points to the lack of diversity, the issues in our own internal supply chain. We have too few suppliers, mm. um, and we're really limited in that way. And the FDA has really, really limited uh, foreign suppliers here in the U.S. to in order to protect the U.S. market. So that's an interesting so, point, Dr. Hills. Mm -hmm. You're basically saying that rather than uh, the FDA looking out for us, making sure we have enough baby formula, what they've done is act almost as if like a as a protectionist union yeah. for the people that manufacture baby formula in the United States. So they're not going to let the French or Italian or wherever uh, companies import their baby formula here because we want to protect these companies that can't keep baby formula on the shelves. <laughs> yes, I mean, that, that is certainly what it looks like. Yeah. Um, and they've gotten, you know, over a million pounds of powder formula from abroad here to the U.S., but uh, there's not a distribution um, system in place to get those formulas to the stores. Mm -hmm. So they're being sold online. So even though we have formula from abroad here in the U.S., getting it to the shelves has been really difficult. Mm -hmm. And that is all, yeah, I think it's a byproduct of how the FDA has functioned, our yeah. own internal um, supply chains, and the limitations we've had in, in having few manufacturers cornering the market yeah. uh, for formula. It's taken yeah. a long time to get here, where mm -hmm. we're in this situation with few manufacturers and all this red tape. Normally you would say, you know, formula for babies, you want to make sure that, you know, it's the highest level and regulations are in place. You don't mm -hmm. want any, you don't want any risks taken with babies. Of course. But the, the downside is that also means that there are limited options. So right, this is parents. a childless uh, adult question. Mm -hmm. Is baby formula powdered or is it in liquid form? Mostly powdered, but it sometimes in liquid. Both. Yeah, oh, it comes yep. in both. Okay. Yeah, but so, mostly powdered, but yeah, oh. it can come in both. Mm -hmm. Okay. So All listen, right. before before we run out of time, parents want to know what they can do. What are their options? Yes, there are a couple of do's and a couple of don'ts. Mm -hmm. The don'ts: don't add water to your formula. It's really dangerous. Kids can't, infants can't filter a large amount of water, and they can end up having seizures and uh, and major medical problems from that. Mm -hmm. Don't make your own formula. Um, infants don't have a developed immune system. Bacteria that wouldn't harm us that might be on your kitchen counter or in uh, any tool or, or piece of equipment in your kitchen could harm your baby. It probably won't meet the nutri nutritional requirements of your baby too. So don't make your own formula. Mm -hmm. Do talk to your pediatrician. They can give you a list of formulas that you can use. Most infants 
will be able to use a variety of formulas that are out there. So if you can't find the one you normally use, there should be a list of other formula products that you could find on a shelf and use. Do, pretty, do pediatricians still have sort of like a little extra stash? Because I remember when, when my daughter was little, sometimes they give you, you know, a mm -hmm. little to hold you over. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's all gone now. I think many do. Mm -hmm. um, I think it rotates. You know, different formulas become available. One week you have one formula available in yeah. stock in your office. The next week it might be a different formula that's available. Many do. Many can also get you connected with manufacturers that can send a supply to your home. Mm. Lots of avenues to pursue. So talk to your If pediatrician you're traveling in Europe, can you bring some back? Ooh, I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, meaning like, could you, could, uh, could an American baby so. drink French baby formula is my question. Not I about, I'm not talking about so. tariffs or, yeah. yeah. But I, I would guess so, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, good, excellent question. Great question. I don't know. I don't know if you rolled up with a suitcase of formula, there might <laughs> so be some additional questions. baby's wearing a beret and uh, waving a little <laughs> thing of brie after her. And then it grows up with a refined palate. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Hill, it's always great to have you. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.